Hey everyone, continuing for graphs and transformations, we have the last quote unquote type of graphs, which are the parametric equations, all right? So what are parametric equations? So unlike our standard equations where we express x and y together, we now separate the x and y, and we each represent them in terms of another function in, a, in terms of a common variable. So let's say we have function uh, x equals to a function of t, and y would then also be another function, let's say g, also in terms of t. Hence, we call this t a common parameter. All right, so that's how the, uh, the name came about, called parametric equations. All right, now usually the domain of t, or rather the range of t will be defined, so the domain of each of x and y will be defined, so t is defined, all right? And it can come in many forms. You can come in a restricted form. Let's say we have t is between zero and two pi, or you can come in a sort of an unrestricted type, right? So let's say t is any real value. So t is an element of the reals, all right? So it really depends, all right? In terms of graph sketching, I'll save that to the next uh, few videos where I'll be going through the graphing calculator because some parametric equations, you really can't just sketch them because you, know, you, you can't, in a way, sketch them by hand because the equations are incredibly tough to even find the Cartesian equation, which I'll be covering the technique now, actually. So for the most part, in terms of graph sketching, you know, use your GC, right, when it comes to parametric equation, unless you can really draw the Cartesian equation uh, directly, all right? So which brings me to this, so finding Cartesian equations, all right, from parametric. Now, not all equations not all parametric equations would give you the Cartesian equation, all right? For example, if we have, let's say x equals to sine alpha plus alpha square and y equals to e alpha plus ln alpha, then good luck, right? It is incredibly difficult to get alpha or in fact, even try to do any substitution or addition or subtraction because you literally have, you know, the four different types of uh, math there, right? Trigonometry, algebra, exponential and logarithm. It's difficult. Okay, so when we talk about finding Cartesian equations, usually they are very simple. How so? One way is you're able to make x the subject, or rather, actually, just put it more generically, you can do substitution, right, by usually making x, uh, making one the subject, in making t the subject, rather, t subject in one equation. All right. So that is one way. The other way is you have trigo and you can use the identities. All right, so usually the identities come in sine and cosine, tangent and secant, and rarely you will see cosecant and cotangent, right? Because actually, if you think about it, well, as you see, as you, as you soon see, cosecant and cotangent are actually the, the same technique as tangent and secant, all right? So this is quite rare, so I'm gonna add a very badly drawn uh, a few badly, wow, there's two badly drawn asterisks right there, wow. All right, so I'm gonna show you each uh, technique together. So when I say substitution, you're basically substituting one equation into another and getting rid of t, right? Because in terms of, because when we talk about Cartesian equation, it is x and y purely, all right? So let's start off with the first example. Let's say we have x equals to t minus one and t plus two, all right? and y equals to, let's say, 2t minus 3. Okay, from here, you want to make, let's say, make a Cartesian equation. It's actually possible because you realize you can make t in terms of y, where we have t equals to y plus 3 over 2. Substitute that in into our first equation in x. We then have x equals to y plus 3 over 2, whoops, uh, minus 1 first, then y plus 3 over 2 plus 2, all right? We can then factorize out one quarter because we factorize out half from the first factor and half from the second factor to give us half times half to give us one quarter. We then have y plus 1, and here we have y plus 7, all right? So this is an example where we can get the Cartesian equation, all right? Of course, if they want y in terms of x, you then need to perform some magic aka you're completing the square to make y the subject and then to perform the square root and all that nonsense. All right, so it really depends, but if it's just a Cartesian equation, it is satisfactory to just leave it as it is, okay? 
So this is the first technique, so I'm going to write here number one. Now number two where we involve trigo. Okay, so let's say we have x equals to very basic, let's use sine and cosine. So sine alpha and let's say y equals to cosine alpha. All right, or let's make it a bit tougher. Let's say we have x equals to a sine alpha and y equals to b cosine alpha. All right, so we now have sine and cosine. What can we do? What identities are there? You can use, you want, you want to get rid of alpha, right, which is the parameter. So if you look at your identities, there's only kind of like three equations that get rid of alpha, right, which is the sine squared plus cosine squared, uh, one plus tangent, and one plus cosecant squared. So of course you're doing your sine and cosine, we want to use the identity sine squared plus cosine squared equals to one. As such, let's make that the subject. Sine over a, at x over a, give it a sine alpha, y over b equals to cosine alpha. We then square both sides, so square, 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 square. Instead of substituting like what we did in one, we now add them together to give us x square over a square equals, oh sorry, uh, plus y square over b square equals to sine square plus cosine square, uh, of sine square alpha plus cosine square alpha. Sine square alpha plus cosine square alpha will give us one, therefore we get rid of this and we get one. And you notice, this is the equation of your ellipse or your circle. All right, of course, ellipse if A is not equals to B and circle if A equals to B. All right, so for the most part, if you look at your conics, right, where I'll show you guys actually from the graphing calculator, you will see that your conics are actually made of your trigonometrical identities. All right, particularly for ellipse and circle, you see sine and cosine. For your hyperbola, it will be tangent and secant, or possibly cosecant and cotangent, but we will realize that if you're going to apply tangent and secant, it's the same technique as cosecant and cotangent as well. All right, so yeah, there we have it, the parametric equations, where we don't talk about grass catching it, because that will be in our uh, GC, which I will make separate videos about. All right, so do take a look out for that, and there we have it, parametric equations, and how to find Cartesian equations from some pairs of parametric equations.